Public comment? Anybody? No? Okay. So you must be calm? That's me. Wanna pull the seat up? <clears throat> Everybody read the email from Colin. Oh man, I'm sorry. I have to look at here, huh? Is there anybody uh, there for public comment? Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. We can hear you. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, everybody read the letter from Colin? Okay. But, uh, so. Yeah, so I'm just here to advocate in person for, um, you know, to thank the select board first and foremost for the improvements that were done a few years back on Brownsville Road. Uh, that section of road is holding up really nicely, and I just worry about um, future degradation from erosion from the top portion of the road. Um, our neighbors are currently um, in the process of removing a bank and clearing some trees to help widen the road um, and allow some sunshine through, so that should help out with mitigating some of the, uh, the potential thaw and mud season that we faced this year where the road became impassable. Um, so I would love, you know, if it's possible in future years to see some improvements to the road, specifically drainage and uh, potentially some culverts that are beginning to fail. Um, so just here to advocate for that. I know that uh, the town's funds are limited, mm -hmm. um, but hopefully in improving the property values up there, we can increase some tax revenue for the town. There are a few people who are um, improving their home sites currently and hoping to build here in the near future. So more traffic on that road is going to lead to it, you know, deteriorating faster. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. I did talk to Tom today. He said he talked to Martin. Okay. And they are planning on putting one culvert up there. Excellent. And one load of some kind of material, I believe, but I didn't get any more details. That's amazing. Thank you, Sasha. Every little bit helps. So we're just, uh, you know, a young family in Vermont who's very happy to be here and planning to stay here and, you know, raise our kids. And Great place to raise them. That it is. So we'd uh, love for it to be a, a safe place and heaven forbid there ever be an emergency, be able to have access for uh, for trucks and crews that would have to be there. Mm -hmm. so. Excellent. Okay. So oh, I think question for the board, if that's okay. Sure. Uh, regarding this issue, do you, uh, is that a Group B Class 4 road? Or is it a Group A? Do we know that? I don't know that. I don't even know if... I don't. Yeah, you know, we really need to pull that, that whole thing out. Cause that may have to be redone. Well, it's, I mean, Group B is what it currently is charted as. It says these roads are determined to be not greetable by town equipment. That's why I was wondering. Mm -hmm. And if they're doing work up there, yeah, you got to sort of redact that or do something. Right, right. I think we have to re-look re at that, you know, especially since we're taking a look at the legal trails and everything. I think it's a good... Good time to look at other. Class four. Yeah. Yeah, this, this one's a class four and all this one, yeah. Where does it go change to the class four? I was gonna ride right at the bottom. Right at the bottom. Yeah. The whole yeah. road is class four. The whole road is class four. Um, there were substantial improvements done back in twenty nineteen with some grant funds. Um, and that portion of the road is in excellent condition. Uh, the road hasn't been looked at for reclassification since 2013, and it has gone through a name change since then. So in the old mm -hmm. documentation, it would be Jacob's Road. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, well, sir, certainly uh, looks like things are going to be improving for you. So. That's great. Well, we greatly appreciate it, and okay. let us know what we can do to help. Okay, great. So, right. Appreciate your time. Okay, thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks for the muffins. Maybe yeah, you should take one. Oh, there's one with nuts and one without. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you can leave everybody in the morning too. I'm sure. Everyone yeah. in the crew would love to have some muffins. Oh well, yeah, right. Bring them to the road crew, right? There you go. <laughs> All right, thanks. Hey, thank you. Okay, um, so uh, reports and communications. Announce <clears throat> and so on. What do we have, Sasha? Oh. Um, 
Stefan needs to be reappointed for um, tree forest fire warden. Forest fire warden, okay. <clears throat> I'll make that nomination for Stefan to the forest fire warden. Second. Any discussion on it? Okay. All in favor of keeping Stefan as the forest fire warden, say aye. 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 No opposed. Okay. Thank you, Stefan. <laughs> Not a problem. I look forward to continuing on what I've been doing. Okay, great. And then uh, the LCT brought some two new insurances to Sharon's attention. This is a life insurance, and since you're the guru at that stuff, um, it's one fifty something per person for ten thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. The town would need to pick up the first part for an order. Say Sean wanted to get fifty thousand in addition, mm -hmm. it would open up a option for him to upgrade it. Okay. And then there's also doing pet owners insurance. Okay. Now th this is. Through whom? Yes, uh, National, National Services. So that has nothing to do with the LCT or anything? Like? No, but they're, it, it's going through the LCT. It, it Sally is. McKenzie? Sally McKenzie. She yeah. said she knows you. Yes, she does. Know. So if you have any inquiries about it. Right. And then this would be under the town entity and it would be an option for the employees. So this would be a voluntary? Yep, unless the town wanted to do it. Okay. Um, I feel more comfortable having a full board mm -hmm. here to talk about, because that's increasing benefits. Yeah. Okay. Do, the, the, do like, we get dog insurance or something? <laughs> you can. As a select board? Well, no, it's really for the employees. Yeah, oh, okay, I just checked. <laughs> sand from Barron's Gravel Pit in Bolton to our sand pile contractors for $4,000 of three-quarter inch winter sand at $575 a yard. <clears throat> and the rep contract representative is DA Rampton. And that's all we, we have, so. I'll make a motion that we uh, go with the, this uh, contract. Okay. Uh, any, any, any discussion? Is that typically what it would stand cost? Yeah, I think that's most people more, 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 more these days, right? I think it was that's, more than that last year. I don't that, know. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, no. I thought it was a little higher. So we, uh, it's up a little bit from last year, but it's still a very reasonable number considering Inflation and everything. Right. Yeah. Okay. And fuel costs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So, all in favor of that, uh, say aye. 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 Okay. Um, there was the email from Lori Rush about renting the town hall July 12th and needing okay to have a discount on it. It's for the student. Um, oh, the um, <laughs> Azerbaijan, right, yeah. right. Uh, youth uh, environmental program. We're just wanting a discount on it since it was like a non-profit thing. Right. right. But will they still do the, they'll still do uh, like the insurance and stuff? Right. They'll still have to do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm 
So this the ones that I had read was uh, uh, Northfield Savings Bank. So these are from commu Community Bank. And those are the best, those are the better ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when do we have to do this? I think stuff? as soon as we can. Um, I was trying to get it. Okay. Get it delivered hopefully this week. Okay. Well, um, I, I think we can decide on it. Yeah, go for the community bank. And uh, we are decided by it, right? So. And what do you think about the, the term? I, th I think we talked about three years, didn't we? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll let, let the, hopefully the track is going to last longer than three years, right? Right. Yeah, Stefan will yeah. go longer than three years. <laughs> oh, yeah. I Sure will. Okay. Step <laughs> one, what's the warranty for that? Because three years is a good term usually for a tractor. I don't know. I know that it was a little bit different, the warranty, um, just because it's a, a commercial account. So I'm not sure what the warranty is that came with. Okay. Does that make any sense to have a five year? Probably. Yeah. Get it done. Right. Get it done. Save a little more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make that motion that we uh, go with the community bank for financing the Kubota tractor, uh, a three-year term at two point six nine percent. Second. 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 <laughs> and Kelly, and uh, any more discussion? All in favor of that, say aye. 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 Okay. And that's it. Okay. Holly, you have something? Not much. I think um, in looking at kind of all of the issues that are coming off class four roads, maybe we need to have something in zoning that really clearly lays out what the town does, what the town doesn't do for people coming in and buying them. And right. And also with trails that they understand. And the yeah, same with trails. We, really, yeah. we don't have that 
right now we just have we have the uh, you know the, the policy class four policy. There is a, a policy in zoning that describes them going in front of the PRB though. Mm -hmm. If their property does not abut a class one, two, or three uh, town highway. So in that section, I think I believe just off memory it's four point one. So yeah, it's but, okay. but talking to the DRB last week, they have not seen too many um, of these uh, people getting permits for being off those classifications of roads. So I, it's also important probably for the select board to follow up with the zoning in the DRB to find out how come they're not doing their due diligence possibly and um, seeing how come uh, the DRB is not seeing more of these individuals because as statute states and also as zoning states that they need to go in front of the DRB. Mm -hmm. So I mean the processes are in place. They may be clarified a little better because um, it doesn't say the access, they're just that their land has to abut a class one, two, or three, even though they're accessing it from a class four or legal trail access. Well, they have to apply for a curb cut. I mean, a, a driver cut. Well, you can get a curb cut on a legal trail class four. No, 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 but I mean, they have to so, do that, so that maybe that should be part in that part of the flag. Yeah. Because I also think there are a lot of there, you know, like if you're getting a curb mm -hmm. cut on a, cla on a class four road or a trail, yep. well then you have to do a boop, 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 you know. And there are also a lot of camps that are not supposed to be full-time residences being utilized as being turned into first. Full -time. Well again, in zoning states that you can't have a camp, you can't stay in it more than 180 days in a, in a year. Mm -hmm. But there's no like um, sort of penalty if you do that is not going to stop somebody from going longer or living there full time. Right. And that also so, kicks in a different tax rate too if you live more than 180 days. That's true. That's true. Um, this is Denise McCarty. I'm attending as part of the public, and I did submit public comment to the select board and at the zoning um so the april 18th select board meeting i submitted um verbal comment and written comment and i submitted um written and verbal comment to the zoning committee meeting um that occurred after the select board meeting i think it was april 20th around uh legal trails because my house is off of the legal trail and has been since 1996. Um, and so <laughs> the idea that was just mentioned about having zoning um, and having specific zoning or some kind of ordinance around um, class four and legal trail maintenance. Um, that's something that I mentioned specifically in my public comments on April 18th and April 20th. Um, because I don't have any legal authority to tell my neighbors who destroy the road that they have to fix it um, or that they're damaging it or they should put gravel um, and repair it. I have no legal authority to direct them to do that. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I can be the nicest neighbor and ask politely, but I can't enforce it. And so, you know, when my neighbor destroyed the, the legal trail and neither of us could get to our houses, and I'm the only full-time resident off of the legal trail, and I had to walk to my walk from the turnaround to my house for four weeks straight. Like, um, you know, I don't have any authority <laughs> over 
the the road that leads to my house. So that's all I was going to mention. Okay. And certainly you did make some very good points and uh, suggestions that uh, we're still going to be reviewing. David, do you have anything to uh, add about this? Well, we, uh, Denise did talk to the zoning committee. Uh, I actually had to live on this off the same road. It borders my property, even though I don't use it um, to get to my house. And um, I think the zoning uh, I'm sorry, the Planning Commission is willing to consider amendments. Uh, as you may know, we are in a process to develop a large number of amendments for hopefully for approval at the next town meeting. And I think ideally we would be able to add something in that time frame. Uh, I was going to talk to Tom to see if that's actually what you, you guys prefer that we do, but if if that's um, your uh, clear, you know, if that's what you'd like, we will proceed that way. Okay. Yeah, I think we, you know, I'll work on it, the select board and <laughs> the planning board. It's also not encouraged to reclassify these. Uh, these roadways, legal trails, it's very much encouraged not to because of, we are gonna need another road for it. We just barely had a tree removed on Moortown Mountain Road that was quite sketchy. Today, that's been there for almost a week and a half, two weeks. Mm -hmm. So it makes it uh, more of a burden on taxpayers. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's many papers written on it saying that it's uh, not encouraged to upgrade these uh, legal trails or class four roads, right. which would be a classification of three, most likely, which means the town has to maintain it. Right. And also then there's also like up on Cobb Hill um, or legal trail one, that's a class two wetland. And the zone, the select board, I hope they take that into consideration because any upgrade to that legal trailway could possibly potentially be devastating to the wildlife around and also to the wetland itself. Right. And we have to meet regulations on our current classifications of roads, one, two, and three. Or otherwise, we don't get state funding. Correct. So it's going to, and what I'm, what I'm just saying is, it, we put ourselves in a situation creating more class three roads where people can build off and, and do things such as that. I mean, it, it's quite risky to be living off these class four roads mm -hmm. and legal trails for all the public of Moortown. And it shouldn't be allowed, and current zoning says that without going in front of the DRB, and it's not happening. It's, it's just, uh, it, I don't wanna see our taxpayers pay more and more and more when some of our roadways need some care as it is, our regular class roadways. That's, uh, thank you. Well, it's certainly historic, always been in the situation of not upgrading. Roads, you know, yeah, I mean, you're, for any, any time in the past, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, the last one I think that we had any serious talk about was Moortown Heights, mm -hmm. and uh, because it was an association, it was um, basically if, if they wanted to pay for upgrading and so on. But you know, bottom line is, it's a lot different these days to to. Uh, upgrade to a class three. I mean, there's a lot of things you have to have on a class three road mm -hmm. that none of our class three roads have. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so all the existing class three roads are, right. are grandfathered, but um, the requirements for class three roads. Well, Central Vermont Planning high. Commission uh, has a culvert and road evaluation, you know, that they have to do every three years. And uh, that would be part of that 
you know, uh, clean streams, you know, streams and rivers mm -hmm. uh, compact that uh, Moortown's already committed to and uh, has to follow those rules and that gets expensive too. Yeah. You know, it, it, it all adds up to big price tags. And even if we had a bunch of houses out in these class four roads, it may or may not make up for the difference for the upkeep of just that one road. I and mean, we're talking millions of dollars a mile. So, you know, it's not cheap. Right. So I just hope that's in consideration. And uh, I would just wish that the select board and uh, Moortown would uh, further look into how zoning, a lot of these houses are, that are being created just happened since we've had zoning on this issue. You know, 2018. Mm -hmm. So, the good gentleman was just here. His house was built in 2018. Right. And that's a big house up there. And it's treacherous to get up there. I drove up there today and it was all I could do to get there. I mean, when people, about, you know, so when someone buys a house on a class four road, they, they know, do they know that it's like a seasonal road or that it's not up? That it's not part of being yeah. the town that's not. Well, well that's my thing. Yeah. Is yeah. I don't I think there are people who build on these roads and they know there are people who know like the upkeep, what needs to be done, and they do it. And then I think there are people who have heard things or see different things and then have this expectation or don't know or don't fully understand it or say the emergency vehicle is the big thing. You can't get an emergency vehicle. They're going to get an emergency vehicle there. Trust me, I know I've had someone die on a class four road. Like, they're going to get an emergency vehicle there. They got it there. Like, they're going to get it there. That's a thing. But just like being really clear about what the expectations are, what the town is going to do, and what the homeowner Right. Or what is the town's not going to do. Exactly. Right. And it's just be that, really you know. clear. The other thing I've noticed, sorry, that was great no, points, great good. points with emergency well, vehicles. I mean, emergency vehicles came to find my house. I live on a, a main <laughs> class. Well, what I want to say, so then the next, just to finish, and then, yeah, you yeah. Know, then the next item when it's a trail, I mean, that's like, if you choose, I mean, someone, built, you know, a trail is like totally with the, with the town. There's no upkeep. Not, not, no upkeep at all. It's not even a town highway. Right. It's it's a an old tra it's a trail, and it's designated that from the state, right? Yes. Well, it's the state well, and the select one. Yeah. I mean, but it goes back. Well, uh, that's a, yeah. That's, it's on record with the state. That yeah. Was, but I mean, it yeah. goes back to early 1900s or something. Like these trails. No, or, it goes back to the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. Act, Act 178 goes back into the 80s, about 84. 84. 90. 84 is when all this became statute and became, oh, okay. uh, became okay. like select board's responsibility. Like Cobb Hill, that what became a legal trail in 1987. That was a class four road before. Yeah. I know that um, people that bought the land um, off of the class four road before my driveway uh, just saw that the legal trail was well maintained, which was because of me and that I maintained it because I was the only one living there full time. Um, but it was my understanding that they purchased land thinking that the town <laughs> maintained it. And I think that's um, how it was presented during the sale process was, oh, this is maintained by the town. Little did they know, because they didn't talk to me until after the sale was done, that it's me uh, maintaining it with my equipment. Um, and it's not the town doing it. So, you know, it's it's just the a communication piece, I think, that during this sale process of land off of the legal trail, um, it's 
it's being presented um, not <laughs> in um, a very truthful way that the town's going to maintain it, and they don't. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, and that's I think some people that that's the exact thing is where people so like does know. it need to come in if land if well, land's being sold does then that well that becomes that, that becomes, that be becomes sort of another responsibility and the other thing is our current road foreman or road commissioner and I think everybody needs help in this area is. They need to learn how to read a, read a V-Trans map. A V-Trans map is the official map to use when identifying these legal trails, class four roads, class one, two, and three. That is the official document. And that's the official document thanks to the select board signing uh, a certificate every year by, May, uh, by February 10th. Mm -hmm. So the select board, this is your responsibility. To know where all your class four legal trails are, and that's part of why you're doing some of the surveying. And you don't want to end up like my parents, where they lived for 60 some odd years, almost 40, 50 some odd years, and then all of a sudden the select board says there's a legal trail goes straight across their garage that's been there since the 1800s. And then, it's, and then it becomes a lawsuit for 12 years that still hasn't been settled to this day. You know, but the other thing is, the, the more important thing is that it's been brought up too, is financial institutions are giving loans on these houses. And that puts them at great risk because I've been up to Denise's place. It's all I can do to get up there with my truck. If a fire truck ever makes it down there, it could get totaled. There's no place to turn around. It's very dangerous. So this is putting everybody at risk, because anybody that owns a property here in Moortown, a house, and they have a fire and the fire truck's wrecked because it went up one of these legal trails of class four roads, that's an issue. And we might not even be insured as a town for that fire truck going up some of these places. So, I mean, it, it, it's very risky. And that's why you see me attending these meetings quite a lot especially revolving around legal trails and class four roads. Our past zoning administrator, the day he got let go, whatever happened to him, he brought this up that day. He brought it up at the meeting, that this point will be coming to tuition. It's going to mm -hmm. happen. Right. So, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, we cool. have current zoning, is all I want to say. We have statutes that clearly state what's responsible and not responsible. And I have read those, and I read those on a daily basis. Every single day of the year, I read those. And I, I just don't see how this select board in this town doesn't understand that. It's, it's really kind of irritating to me. You see it in my attitude with this town. It's been very devastating to my family and myself. And that's, that's all we need to say. I mean, I think right. that's, we've hit every point, so. Thank you for your input. Well, thank you for letting me speak, John. I appreciate okay. that. Thank you. Okay. Okay, all right. so. We've got some work ahead of us. We do yeah. have some work ahead of us, yes. Okay. <clears throat> and then, okay. what ahead. is the whole thing with fundraisers? Because somebody on Herring Brook Road had this humongous, well not humongous, but big enough party where most of, a good section of Herring Brook was single lane on a Sunday night. And I kind of got the feeling that people who lived neighboring to them didn't know about it. But I mean, we're talking full party. Was there over 100 people? Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's probably. 40 cars? There might have been. I uh, I went up there actually because they, uh, I got a report of a, a large fire and with the fire danger, I went up there to investigate it. And they the fire ended up being fine, but I would say there was probably a hundred people there and they had a bar, which I wasn't sure about because I thought you needed a liquor license 
to have an actual bar where paying customers buy alcohol. No, were they buying it or they were just serving alcohol behind a, a set up bar? Uh, I'm, I, w I didn't pay that close attention. I just know that there was official bartenders with a whole, a whole bar stack behind them. I didn't see whether money was being yeah. exchanged or not, I guess. Right. I mean, it was, I mean, I've thrown parties in the past with a, you know, it'll you know, be like a, a bar and someone, you know, but we're not taking any money or anything. Well, we have zoning on having a, a Cajun over a hundred people. Oh, nice. So, and you got to get a permit for that. So, yeah, and they never let any of I don't know, oh. but when there's, when you're sitting there for 15 minutes watching like 20 cars, yeah, yeah, go yeah. up the road. Was You're like, any, what's uh, going on? Was there any uh, police officers called? State police or anything? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think it so got like it. out of control. It was just the tap, the road got past <laughs> the, the access to the road got that stuff. Yeah, there were they were definitely that was not a lot of parking. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Add that to the list. <laughs> yeah. When's the next one? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Why weren't we invited? We're very down the road. No, I think that's it. Okay. Okay. For now. Okay. Don, what do you have? Well, um, mm -hmm. um, oh, well, just to say that uh, uh, we got a crew out came out. Oh, that good. Really? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Could we, could yeah, we yeah. Well, obviously, when we fertilize the cedars and the ewes and put some. Uh, well, we both got donated some beautiful aged manure. Oh, cool. Four, three, four year old manure pile that he had. And uh, then the wood chips from a long time was still there. That was that did the rest of the job, so that was a good buy for those. You know? mm -hmm. So hopefully that'll you know, give them a little spur. Hey. I was thinking of taking a picture with someone standing next to him, you know, and then we could see it here from there. Scale, to see if they grow some more. But no, it was a good effort. We got um, the maples, we put some fertilizer on the maples, but, uh, and I was going to talk to Martin about this, but and then maybe to come and look as well, is that we, we should make like a tree cell around it. Because, mm -hmm. you know, where the branches are is usually how the roots are, right? Right, and, yeah. And so what happens is that vehicles and trucks are driving, you know, if we made a little box around them. Right. We might be able to encourage those maples. There's still three that are hanging in and one that's died. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's the next step. Okay. And other than that, I don't have anything else today. Okay, good. Well, uh, thanks for uh, doing Yeah, that. no, they look good. <clears throat> uh, I, don't, I don't have anything, so. Okay, so we have. So, uh, so I wasn't sure. Um, I was talking and I think the the guys and, and myself at the at the highway department, it's uh, getting to be that time of year. We we're hoping for the go ahead to switch to our uh, our four 10 hour days. And part of the reason that uh, that I I personally like the the 10 hour days is it gives me Fridays to work on things like the the E911 stuff and and gives me a day during the week to do to do that kind of work during regular business hours, if you will. And I wasn't sure uh, where we stood with that, if we could could do it or or not. Mm -hmm. um, we usually start, don't we usually start like June 1st, right after Memorial Day? I thought it was Memorial Day. Memorial Day? Sure. Yeah. I wasn't sure, I just, I know that it's usually after mud season and we're we're there and I didn't know when it was. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah, um, it should be after Mother's Day. Yeah, well that's <laughs> Yeah. Because I know it's getting it's lighter in the morning and it's lighter later. So they've got more time to start working on some of those summer projects right. too. Right. Okay, that's uh, another thing to talk about when we have the full board. Okay, okay thanks, Stefan. <clears throat>
Thank you. Okay, let's um, let's take a look at the zoning administrator. Pat Patrick Blanchard is here, and uh, David and uh, Deborah here also from the Planning Commission. Um, so let's uh, let's hear from from you folks. Sure, I'll, I can start. You can hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Patrick uh, applied a couple weeks ago. We had a communications issue and I finally caught up with him on, uh, I think that was last Friday or maybe last Thursday. And we had a long discussion. I think he's seems pretty well qualified. Uh, I'm gonna let Patrick tell you about himself. I'm not sure what, I did forward some information to Tom actually. Does that, did everybody get that on the select board? Yeah, I read it. Yeah. I saw your Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, so uh, I guess I think he's very well qualified. He expresses a long, an interest in doing this long-term. Uh, I had a couple of concerns that I've talked to him about. Um, one is whether it might raise conflict of is- is- interest issues with his current job, which uh, he can tell you about. and. I'm, I'm hopeful we can resolve that. Um, and uh, well, that, that was really the main issue actually. So um, I think that he does need training and we'll need to, uh, you know, pay him while he's getting training. I think we can get help from uh, CVRPC for that. Uh, I've talked to Tom about that too, but uh, seems like if he's really willing to do this for the long term, we should be willing to invest in it, provided that everybody agrees. So, let me. Is that my cue then, David? Is that my cue, sure, David? Introducing yeah. Patrick. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's nice to meet you all. Yeah, it's been a kind of tough time getting nailed down with you all. Sorry, I've been having some email issues, but. Um, yeah, basically, yeah, I work for the state. I work for the state as a regional floodplain manager, legal analyst. So I have been with them since September. I became full time with them in the past couple weeks or so. So I guess, yeah, good. Yeah, who? Yeah, full time with the state, which is great. Um, so we're still divvying out what my exact like location will be. Um, so David kind of spoke to the conflict of interest piece there for a moment. And that's kind of where I was a little hesitant at first for being the ZA for Moortown. Um, so if there was some, I'm in floodplain management. So if I'm doing something that's floodplain related in Moortown, I might have Washington County as kind of like my baby. So that might be one of those instances. And I talked to my boss today about this is like, if we have a floodplain issue, um, that might just be something I defer to somebody else in my agency. Um, but that's really the only sort of like conflict of interest we both identified for this moving forward. Um, so I work with all the different music- municipalities throughout Vermont. I kind of, yeah, I work with everybody and have a lot of training in different places, work for federal agencies, state agencies, nonprofits, I've kind of done it all. Um, I love local state government. I love working with working with local municipalities. I'm interested in this because I have, I'm in law school right now as well. So I like to be busy apparently. Um, and I want to know more about how like little small municipalities in Vermont work. And so the zoning piece of this is really important for me for my own like job growth and like my own personal growth. And also just for, I just, in general, I just, I live out here. I live in Duxbury, Waterbury. Um, so I like to be a part of my town, part of my community. I hear everything that's going on with all your um, people's concerns and voices for this kind of stuff. Um, I'm a big runner and a big biker. I use all all these trails. I do all these things. And so all this stuff directly impacts me and affects me on a day-to-day basis too. So that kind of stuff is kind of what impacts me and kind of makes me really passionate about this kind of work in general. Um, So in general, that's a little bit about me. I just, I'm here. I am happy to field any questions you all have. I, I hope I'm moderately qualified. I think it's a nice thing for David to say. I don't know if I'm truly qualified, but you know, I'm here to field questions and I'm, I'm a big learner. I love learning new things and I like working with people. So uh, that's kind of my thing. And so hopefully we get to have some more com- conversation about that moving forward. So that's me. 
Okay, excellent. Well, I'm not sure if we've ever had a zoning administrator who uh, was was perfectly uh, qualified for the positions. I mean, it's it's a learn learn as you go type of thing. So, um, I, you know, for what you say, I think that I mean, it would be plenty qualified in my mind at any rate. So. Um, I mean, what, if you uh, do, you see yourself. I mean, getting taking the job and learning the ropes and being part of the community and all that. But I mean, do you see yourself doing it in the long run? I mean, you know, like a, a five-year plan, or I mean, uh, you know, is it just a couple of years, or uh, how do you sort of envision it? Yeah, that was one of the. Yeah, I mean, now you're breaking up. Yeah, we lost you, Patrick, for a minute. Yeah, we don't, we're not hearing you. Yeah, I lost you as well. Okay, now we can hear you. <laughs> we can, hear that. can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Yeah. yeah, I'm also hearing that break up on your end, too, so I can't tell if it's me or you. Um, I guess that's it's a hard question. It's like the question of, like, oh, where do you see yourself in five years? It's hard when you're, like, in your young 30s. Um, but I mean, I'll ultimately, like, I, I live here, like, this is my, this is my place. I love Vermont. I like bought a house here and like, I want to be working for the state full time for a long time. I want to be like working with municipalities full time. Like would I want to be your zoning administrator for five years. Sure. Like I want to say that. Yes, absolutely. I'm invested in my local community, like a hundred percent. So um, if that's something you feel like you want to provide the training and all the everything you have to offer like i can also offer myself to you as well so five years is a hard hard question though i will say that if that's thomas who just asked me that question because uh, i i just don't normally know that I mean. as a number but i mean you know uh, i just yeah just, yeah like all of a sudden you know a year goes by and now you now you're in the groove but of course no one can read the future oh yeah but, you know uh right just, yeah i will i will yeah, I will say, like, I working for the state, I understand, like, the turnover of ZAs, like. Gone again. Lost yeah. you again. Yeah. I think, Patrick, if you shut your video off, it's not going to take as much broadband. Like, so ZA switch over. Okay, thank okay. you. I appreciate it. We can hear you now. Is this better? Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Good. I'm glad there's so many other people to help me out here. Um, so <laughs> I'll just say that, yeah, working for the state, I get it. Like ZA switching over is awful. Like it's just hard for work. It's hard for us to do our jobs for the state. It's hard for y'all to do your stuff at the local municipal level. Like I get that hundred percent. Um, so yeah, like I want to say like, yeah, I want to commit to more town. I want to commit to my local community for sure. So I'm here just start with the state. I don't plan on leaving anytime soon working for the government, you know, it's pretty good working for the government. So yeah, I'm happy to, to hang out as long as necessary and do the things that are necessary too, because yeah, this is, this is my community as well and these are my problems too and i want to also help the community fix those problems so whatever that entails i'm there um, I, li I like to ask a question of the select board which i think is for patrick's information as well as my own i i um i guess and this is related to the other concern that i did have which was uh he's a very busy guy he likes to keep himself really busy he's got a full-time job now with the state and he's also working on his law degree, which is more flexible, I know. But um, I'm wondering whether, I think we advertise the position as about 10 hours a week, but I'm wondering whether um, we should think of that as a steady 10 hours a week. We should think of that as some weeks more and some weeks less and whether Patrick's gonna have to face situations where he's got you know, five permit applications coming in and he's got a, deal with all of them in a 30 day period and he's going to be overwhelmed or what? I, I don't really don't know what the past experience has been. Well, one, one of the, the problems is that you may go several weeks without any, anything and then all of a sudden one, in a given week, 
you might you know, have two or three and so on. Um, so I guess there needs to be enough flexibility so that you know if that happened where we're flooded with a number of them, uh, he'd be able to handle it in a timely manner. So I guess Patrick, the question for you is 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 that is that going to be a tough thing for you to manage? And keep in mind that you know when somebody submits a permit that's complete, there's a fixed length of time in which we, we have to respond. Yeah, right. There's a 30 day window for most applications. Right. Um, I would say no. It's not a huge deal for me. I mean, um, it overlaps a lot with my current job, so I think I think no, I wouldn't have a big issue with it at all. So. I think okay. we pretty much said it's eight to ten hours a week, but it's pretty, you know, it's flexible on those hours. Yeah. Yeah. Does eight to ten hours seem like doable, Patrick? No, yeah, I mean it sounds great. Like I mean, I would say less is more, but you know, if you have ten hours or more and you have a few projects coming up that might take a little bit more time, you know, that's okay too. Not a problem. Okay. I have this uncanny liking of being busy, so it's all, it's okay for me. <laughs> I like being busy. What would you think the train carry? You need, to, you know, like maybe a couple of weeks of someone sort of getting familiar with the zoning docs and, and you know, maybe sit through a couple of applications or something? Or what, what would you envision the train to be? Yeah, I guess I, I'm, I would defer to you on that. I don't fully know how long it would take to understand the zoning. I mean, Moortown's small. I know that mostly like single family housing Z or zoning applications, um, some multifamily stuff. Um, again, the floodplain stuff, assuming that I become the floodplain manager for Washington County would have to be deferred to somebody else just as a conflict of interest thing. But um, I mean, a couple of weeks seems fine if I have as David mentioned, like a, a place to come down there, like see people kind of be in person. That'd be nice. Like I think there's an office you mentioned or something um, that kind of stuff helps with training a lot. So I can ask somebody immediately and not have to send an email and wait like two days, you know? Oh, right. So, right. So a couple, couple weeks would be great. Um, and I can be pretty flexible with that too. So, so uh, Tom and I talked about this some and we, as you know, Claire Rock of CVR, PC is um, yeah. working as our acting commissioner right now. And I think that it, you know, it, he, he can start with you know, studying the, the zoning regulations, the current regs. Uh, I don't think that's a, would take him a full week, but just to study them. But, but I think he's really gonna have to cut his teeth on actual applications and, you know, maybe initially working with Claire where she's in charge and then having him drop it off to him with her being available to back him up, uh, proceed like that. It's, there's going to be some learning yeah. period. Yeah. No, that would be, um, yeah, that's that would right. be good to yeah. work with Claire. She's right. definitely uh, very good. Yeah, so we work with the RPCs pretty closely. So I don't know Claire specifically, but um, our RPCs are like our best friend, honestly, with the state. They do a lot of great work with y'all throughout the state. So I would definitely hook up with her and yeah, just kind of get the crash course through her and kind of see how she runs through applications day to day. Um, that would be really helpful for me. And also just I'll probably work with her in other capacities throughout my other job. So that sounds like a good good plan for me at least. Okay. Patrick, since you're here, a quick question. Are you replacing Jerome Board for uh, stream management? Am I what? I'm sorry. Replacing Jerome Board for the state of Vermont for oh, river management? I, I am not. I'm not. Okay. Thanks, Patrick. Yeah. Patrick, would you be uh, available to come back to like our next meeting when we have a full board here? Absolutely. Okay. Let's plan on that then.
Is that every month or every week, every two uh, weeks? Every two, uh, two weeks. Two uh, weeks. Let's see. The next one is. Uh... Yeah. I I talked to Tom about trying to right, so get th get through the hiring mm -hmm. process so we could start at the end, you know the beginning of June. Right. So. May 16th is our next uh, meeting. What did you say, David? Yeah, yeah so sure. Tom and I talked about the hiring process, and my, my goal was to try to get through it so he could start on June 1st if, if we're going to hire him. Uh, yeah. That seems plausible if you meet with him um, in two weeks and, and make a decision. Uh, it seems to work from my perspective. I don't know if that works for you still, Patrick. No, that works for me. I'm, I'm happy to meet also in person too. So, I mean, I'm only, I'm up in more in Duxbury right now. So I can, I'm only like five minutes away so I can come to the town office. That's fine. Okay. Sounds, Sounds like a plan. All right. Thank you very much, Patrick. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me here. It's great meeting you all. Yeah. Okay, same thanks. here. Thank you, Captain. See you all later. Yeah. Okay, thanks, David. All right, who else is that? Deborah. Okay. Deborah, did you have anything else to add or? I did not. Thankfully, David asked uh, the only question and, and expressed the only concern that I that I had. Okay, very good. All right. Thank you. Thank you, David, and thank you, Patrick, and thank you, Select Board. Good night. Okay. Good night. <clears throat> okay, so um, interest rates be talked about, and then we have the minutes. Uh, 418. I make a motion that we approve the select board minutes of 418 2022. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. There we go for the minutes. And so we're up to new business, small business. The only uh, one of the old business, I think, uh, maybe Stefan, just still here with us. Uh, we 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 still got the tanker truck on in the, in the, the on our radar. We do. Uh, so I have reached out to a couple of the manufacturers to kind of just start start working on what what their projections are for for money and such, and and I'm working on a. a RFP, if you will, and what I'm looking for in a truck. So it's going to be apples to apples when I get some some budgetary numbers to bring to you guys for for November election, hopefully. And I'm actually meeting with one of the manufacturers at a, a neighboring fire station to check out a truck they got that's similar to what I'm looking for and, and work through it with them. Great. Okay, good. Thanks, Thanks for the update. Anything else? Uh, anything else on the, the list? Where are we at with potentially surveying the couple trails that we were looking at for this year? I talked to Steve Frazier with Vermont Survey. Um, there are two survey, there's one survey that's been recorded and then there's one that's not recorded. I'm working with him to find out if we can potentially get that one recorded because I guess it helps with figuring out where the trail leads. Okay. So a little bit of progress. And which Perfect. which trail is that? That's, that's the, the one that um, up here, eight? Um, no. The one that raised eight? You yeah, actually do. Yeah. yeah. Because I think also if we're putting stone and things into that trail, we need to know where it is. And it needs to be passable because I've heard multiple times that there's cement 
blocks up there that you cannot get through. Mm. So. Again, all this stuff is. This is on a trail or on the last floor road. That's a trail. That's a trail. That's a trail. trail number eight, I believe it is. Yeah. But again, all this we're is in statue. We're supposed to make it fit, go, we're supposed to keep it so that you can go through it. I've heard you can't multiple block. times that the, there's cement blocks up there from, oh, the cement. from totally you different people. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, I didn't say, did you say that? That yeah. doesn't seem like someone could do that. Yeah. No, they can't yeah. do that. And that's, uh, I'm glad that slick board's involved in that because you're not allowed to block in no, the trail. No, no, no. The slick board's approval. Right. So, so we've got the survey team working on that. Good. So does that, we're just going to do that one, that, uh, the next year we do the, another trail, is that how we're doing it? It could be <laughs> upwards of 30 grand to do one legal trail, he told me. So what we put in the budget wasn't going to touch it. So we're kind of doing it in little steps. Yeah, because we only put five grand in the budget. <laughs> yep. When I talked to him over the phone, he laughed and he said that you can't do a you cannot do a legal trail for five thousand dollars. No right. way, no way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Any other uh, old business or new business? Well, before we leave that, so is that what's going to end up happening? Well, as far as I do the, the no to, to someday to actually get into the the bones of the legal trail thing and surveying I mean, the town. As a town, we're going to have to put more money in the budget to, to actually, to, you know, to accomplish it. Yeah, I mean, we've got, you know, a lot of stuff with the trails and class four roads. Yeah, no, no, I understand. There's a lot. I, I am a little confused, though, because I didn't think we came to a decision that we're definitively going to do trail eight. I thought that was still a discussion to be had. As far as I know, that was that was the number one, and then the number two was... Uh, because you still need to get a quote for that, right? So you got a quote for that doing that trail then? I mean, like a, a quote for how much it would cost? Because the last meeting you said you were getting a quote. So did you get that quote? We got rates. We yeah, I mean, rate just, up the rates. That's the only one that he could get anybody to respond to the RP. Um, well, there wasn't a, when I talked to Steve himself directly, there wasn't a direct measure of the overview of what the select board wanted. They just, so he just gave them the rates. And uh, so there wasn't uh, sort of a, what the select board was asking for within these legal trips. So, I mean, I, I just don't want to keep going down this road being all confused with this legal trail stuff. I mean, if you're going to do a legal trail, State you gotta do one. I mean just for future reference. And get a I don't know what the abbreviation you said it is, RFP whatever. Request for proposal. Yep, yeah, request for proposal. Get a written request for proposal, proposed, not just saying, oh, what's your rate for an hourly rate? Because when I talk to Steve directly about another legal trail issue, there's no way he would even touch it, even look at it for $5,000. Yeah. And then the other thing is, is Steve properly insured? Because the last time the town did this with Rob Townsend, he did not have insurance, period, for Legal Trail 17. So is he properly insured? And I want to know that. You know, I wonder if we, uh, since this is maybe like, I mean, when I look at this map, there's quite a lot of uh, trails, right? Yes. I mean, yeah. do we, is this something like that we, we put out there, you know, on our you know, on request for proposal to, to multiple firms to, for, you know, all the trails, and then we just get some big number, and then we'll have to just sort of pick away at it, you know, and just say, okay, well, can you do these five, and, you know, we just yeah. budget, and it'll be a 10-year operation every year, you know, because it'll probably be some, you know, it'll be a big number. Yeah. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think I don't anybody, know. Yeah, I don't think anybody would do that because bottom line is you say, okay, 
and we'll do this one in five years. Well, of course, well no, I understand. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, let's, let's keep in mind, the last time they did this, it took 12 years. So, I mean, that also ties up a surveyor for quite some time yeah, yeah. to be part of the processes to be able to, you know, be able to do these issues. And when talking to Steve, he has no experience in legal trips. You know, so, I mean, and the one up on Cobb Hill, there's a surveyor that did a survey up there calling it Class 4 Road. And other surveys prior to his all say legal trip. And he had no experience with legal trails either. So, you know what other towns are doing? A lot of other towns gave up the legal trails back in 2015 mm -hmm. and 2010. That was part of the processes. And they gave them up, they just gave them to the landowners? Yep, something? that's what happens, yep. But this is a, an issue that will be probably ongoing for quite some time. You know, this is, uh, it's going to be a difficult situation, I think, for a lot of people. And it's, somehow it needs to get resolved, and it may take a bunch of years. <laughs> yeah. And I'm here for until the very end. <laughs> so. Um, may I ask a question? What trail is it that you're you've approved to to improve? <laughs> no, no, not to improve. It, it's it's just to survey. To basically, we need to know exactly where the trail goes or is. Oh. Okay, I mean that's one of the problems with with the legal trails. It's um, you know, over the years, their the location has changed, and some okay. problems. It, it's 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 a real issue, and, and you know, the landowners uh, basically uh, complain that people are using their property, going across their property where there is no trail. And so this, so the first step is to define where the trail is. I see. And where is the closest class three road to the legal to, trail? To the one we're talking about? Yes. It would be Ward Brook. Yeah. No, it would be. Yeah. So it, I think it goes, uh, if I remember from the mapping that I looked at a, a month ago now, it would go directly from Ward Brook and start legal trail as Kelly Brook Road legal trail, I believe, but that's that's what I just I saw on our mapping that's a few years old now. Legal trail A is only 0.1 of a mile. It's only a tenth of a mile. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Okay. <clears throat> Any other business to discuss? Okay. I move that uh, we adjourn. Second. One in favor? Aye. 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 Okay.